John Fetterman seems to be continuing his journey to the right, at least on the issue of Israel. The Pennsylvania senator made comments on Israel and immigration during a recent appearance with Jake Tapper that ran contrary to his party's base and received plaudits from those on the right. Let's take a look. Because obviously a lot of progressives on Twitter have been attacking you for your position on Israel, uh, for noting that, in your opinion, um, saying that there is a crisis at the border does not make one uh, xenophobic. Um, why do you think you've been so criticized by so many progressives? I, I honestly don't understand. I, I don't understand why it's controversial to anybody to decide that you're going to stand with Israel in this situation. I honestly don't understand why it's controversial to say we, we need a secure border. Uh, I've been very clear. In fact, that was weaponized against me as Republicans in my race, that I'm very much uh, a strong supporter of immigration. And, you know, my my wife's family, I, that's the uh, Oregon story about that. Uh, and I think two things can be true at the same time. You can be very supportive of immigration, but we also need to have a secure border. Fetterman also received some attention following Ron DeSantis' announcement that he had dropped out of the GOP primaries. Responding to an article announcing DeSantis' departure, Fetterman posted a photo of Mickey Mouse dressed as a king with the text, you come at the king, you best not miss. Some took this as a reference to Donald Trump, who's regarded as the seeming de facto leader of the Republican Party right now, though I see it as a reference to DeSantis' own personal feud with Disney, personal and political feud. All right, starting with Fetterman, I'll just say two things. Um, he is not being dinged for some abstraction of having a, wanting a secure border. Everyone in America can say, of course, I want a secure border. I don't want dangerous things to come into the United States. Right. I don't want people to be queued up at the border for humanitarian right. reasons, sleeping on streets, being bussed around a city to city. Many people I who agree. are Democrats can observe that there is obviously a capacity crisis at the border that needs to be resolved. The question is how it should be resolved, and specifically the indictment uh, against Fetterman, is that he literally held out his wife, who was an undocumented immigrant, as a as an indication of his compassion for the plight of the undocumented, at the same time that now he's advocating for very different kinds of policies to address the crisis at the border. He is not just someone who is married to someone who is an immigrant. Very specifically, she came here as an undocumented kid. She was a dreamer, who I believe gained citizenship through marrying John Fetterman. So to have had the very personal experience to be in love with someone, <laughs> ostensibly, who is the kind of person in the exact same situation that so many people you're now allying with on immigration issues are vilifying and would have deported in a heartbeat, that's the hypocrisy, that's the crit critique that he's getting, that he seems to have flip-flopped on his views because his him, him putting his wife's story out there seemed to indicate that he was going to have a very different posture on these things. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm obviously somewhat out of step with the right on this issue because being very hardline on immigration is a big part of Trump's identity and a big part of where the conservative movement has headed in the last 10 years. Some of the change in direction on the Republican Party has been more aligned with me on foreign policy, but on immigration and some economic issues, it's definitely been the other way. I, I want, like Elon Musk says, Elon Musk says, I want, you know, we want to have less illegal immigration because we want to have more legal immigration. We want to make it easier for people to come here, mm -hmm. to work, to participate in our economy, to move freely. Um, and that would be better for everyone. That's obvious. If the people want to come here, they should be able to do that. And that would make our country a better, richer place. And I don't, as I've said so many times, I just don't, I, I'm not persuaded by the narrative that the, the doomerism some people have on the right, that if we bring in all these people, that's going to be spelled the end for the Republican Party. The demographics are destiny, great mm -hmm. replacement idea, just is not, is, is, is clearly not true because the people who come in have a, have a mix of values. Um, some of, again, some of the people that are, that I would say are most hostile to uh, to conservatism or to what the right wants to do. Th their ancestors have been here for hundreds of years, and they're the most affluent people in our society and the most powerful and well-connected and, and went to all the elite universities. They're not the people coming here. But of course, we need to, we want to have, like, like you just said, I, and we're not particularly far apart on this issue, really. 
it's better for safer for the immigrants to not have to come here under these unsafe conditions, these marches through the desert relying on um, uh, gangs and drug traffickers and all those people. And I, I understand for people who live on the border on the U.S. side, um, you don't want the, the, the disorder of having tent sure. cities be setting up, sure. having the processing be difficult. So we do need to fix all of that. Sure. Okay. So that's, that's one aspect of it. Going on to the Israel question, you know, Fetterman is a free agent. Obviously, he can have whatever opinion that he wants on Israel. But it's worth noting that it's not progressives that are upset with him, the way uh, Tapper, uh, Tapper, Jake Tapper is framing it. Of course, t we, we are. Like, the left is upset with him because the left largely um, enabled him to get elected in the first place and, and provided him so much political cover and resources in terms of campaigning and the like. But it is the entire Democratic Party, as indicated by this new poll, the Democrats are overwhelmingly supportive of a ceasefire. He is taking an, an outrageously fringe position, as so many elected Democratic and Republican leaders are, with respect to Israel Gaza. Fringe in terms of what the voters want. In terms of what the voters want. What else is there? This is yeah. ostensibly a democracy, right? So the, the Nation reported on this new poll that came out, I believe, last Friday, saying in two, in responses to two separate questions, by a two-to-one margin, respondents indicated that they are more inclined to support a member of Congress who supports a ceasefire and that they are less willing to support members of Congress who oppose a ceasefire. That was from a, a survey poll of about 1,000 Americans. Now, keep in mind that that is very different from what the uh, APAC and Democratic Party allies to APAC have been plotting on in, in Congress right now, saying that they pledge to spend as much as $100 million to boost primary challenges against Democrats who back a ceasefire. Maybe he is in the wrong party now, in effect, given what but he, his But he's are. not, because the Democratic Party loves APAC, the Republican Party loves APAC, and right. this is another one of those issues where the Democratic preferences of the majority of the elected are being ignored by a captured group of politicians that are bipartisan in nature and in a bipartisan way are able to ignore what everyone in this country really agrees on, or most well, people in this country really agree I on. I mean, in the Democratic side, sure. Republicans are split on the well, question no, based the, on the latest polling the I numbers saw. I saw the latest polling showed the majorities of Republicans and Democrats support a ceasefire. It's just something like 80 percent for Democrats and like 60 percent for Republicans. Like I high saw 50s. this poll I'm looking at shows 50 percent, but maybe it's maybe this is old. Okay, well, still half of Republicans want a ceasefire, yeah. an overwhelming it's majority, a, and I think a lot of independents, given the politics of independence, tends to be yeah. less I uh, interventionist, are probably all on the same. Same, right. Same page. I, I wish some of this polling on the ceasefire question would spell out exactly what. People want think, think should be that because I, I agree there should be a ceasefire. What are the terms of that going to be? And I think you get some interesting answers. Look, I, th I think that's a legitimate question, but I do think that most of the that polling response is driven by these really horrible images we're seeing out of Gaza. Right. I mean, viral videos of brothers holding their dead, you know, middle school age sisters and weeping uncontrollably. Parents picking up the bloody body parts of their children and collecting them in plastic bags. I mean. As much as the mainstream media, I mean, look at the image that we have on our screen right now, complete and total devastation that really belies the idea that this is Hamas being targeted when you see demolition charges being set by uh, the IDF for entire residential blocks, watching them right. walk away and then film it on their social media, blowing up an entire block. I mean, but some of the block. people who oppose a ceasefire, it's like, I agree, I think if Israel should agree to have no more violence against Gaza, and Hamas should agree to have no more violence against Israel. That would be a ceasefire, right? That would it's, be a ceasefire. It's a, probably some of the people who oppose that don't believe that Hamas would follow through on that. They think there would be further attacks well, the, against Israel, the so there can't be a ceasefire is, until Hamas is defeated. Well, the fundamental problem is I mean, that that doesn't the, liberate the Palestinians from their occupation. And not to mention, of course, even on the West Bank, where there is no Hamas, there have been hundreds of Palestinians killed. Now, an American citizen was just a, a Palestinian American who had visited um, Gaza on a trip, I think to visit family or what have you, uh, or for journalism reasons, was murdered over the weekend in in um, the West Bank, where, again, there's no Gaza, there's, there's no war, there's no Hamas. And it's not clear at this point if it was by the IDF or by settlers well, who are armed by the IDF and defended by IDF. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later. But, I mean, that is what people are responding to. Um, and I don't think that's really about a partisan thing. I think it's about a humanitarian thing. And people just not wanting to see all this death and destruction on their timelines anymore. Yeah. More rising right after this.